right, so here we go. Uh, I'm on a Daisy US official PC server. And uh, I'm, today I'm going to go through how I start a brand new life every time. You know, every life I approach with a maybe a different objective, maybe a different goal every time, but I'm just going to show you how to get some basic gear, how I go about my looting, uh, handling early situations uh, with other players, maybe I get trapped by a bunch of zombies, and so on. I just want to show you my process, and it's kind of like a beginner's walkthrough rather than a beginner's guide. Instead of spawning things in and showing you what you should be doing, I want to actually walk you through it and show you that it's possible. Because I get a lot of comments saying, oh, I, I looted this town and this city for two hours straight and found zero items and I, I starved to death or I died to sickness and I just I just think that you're not looking in the right places or you know something along those lines so today I want to go through my process and show you that finding loot on official servers is really not that hard maybe not as hard as you would think and uh now I'm going to give you my first hour of gameplay, and you can use it as a reference to maybe start off. So we're on a Chernaris server, Chernaris official US server, and uh, my first priority here, we spawned in in Berezino. Uh, if you're a brand new player, you might not know that straight away, but I do because I've, you know, been around the block a couple times. And our first priority is to find a way to start to get food. Uh, I mean, you saw me loot up a boat, and I was looking for some fishing supplies, but we ended up getting a soda, which is, you know, not so bad. That'll keep us going. Oh, see, right off the bat, we get a, uh, you know, a saw. We can just use that to make rags or anything that we need a bladed object for. We can use a saw. And then we also get a uh, an MK2. So we get an early... Uh, early game weapon and we can also use that later down the line as a zombie killer but for now we're gonna use it to defend ourselves in case we run across any uh, unwanted friends you know so my my goal if I'm usually playing solo and I'm just you know having a chill relaxed adventure I think the best way to get food as you've seen in my 2021 guide is to uh, Go fishing straight away, and that's what we're going to try and do. I'm going to show you where I look to get things to fish. Oh, look at that water bottle. That's helpful. All right, we're just going to use this saw to cut up and make some rags. Because you spawn with a bandage, but, you know, if you spawn somewhere where you don't uh, necessarily have a hospital or the hospital might be looted, you know, it's always good to have some rags, and you did see that we found some alcohol tincture, so we can use the tincture to disinfect the rags. We also can use two full stacks of rags, uh, 6 plus 6, combine them together, and with that you'll uh, be able to make a rope, and then from there we can use that to fish, but then we still need a hook, which I'll get to when we get there. You can either find a hook on the coast or, um, you know, from chickens. You can cut up a chicken and... Uh, use the bones to make bone hooks. So when I first start off, I like to loot up pretty much every house until I get to a point where I have enough material. I have, you know, I have some decent warm clothes. I have a melee tool, maybe a, a, a ranged weapon of some sort. Um, I'm looting every house until I get to that point. I don't, the goal right now is to fill up these hunger stats, hunger and thirst stats, and then we also want to be warm. It is nighttime, so it's going to be a little harder to achieve that as a fresh spawn without <laughs> making a fire, but it is what it is. Oh, and in the, in the distance you can hear a chicken, which is a very good sign for us. We can use that chicken as, you know, as food, and then we can also use the, the bones from it, like I said, to... Um, to make some hooks to go fishing and then we'll be set on food early game. You can also usually just farm chickens in your area. That's, you know, oh nice, we got a real knife. You know, chicken spawns you tend to be pretty common. It seems, uh, at least in my experience, like one time I'll kill a chicken and then another one spawns fairly quickly. 
Uh, so you can just do that and get a bunch of chicken steaks and you'll be good to go, but just keep in mind that they don't really last too long in terms of uh, filling up your stomach. Um, bad insulation. We will take that so we can light a fire. Because we don't have matches or a lighter yet, and I don't want to use all my my uses on my knife. Uh, cut and bark and stuff because uh, we do need it to, to make bone hooks and to dig up worms, so I Just uh, want to save our knife until we at least find a couple more All right, Let's find this chicken See I think we're here too. I think one's closer to us and one's a bit farther away um, But you did see me looting those train carts you can find um, pretty decent stuff in those train carts. I found BK-18s. I found double double barrel shotguns. I f can find pretty decent clothing. You saw me find uh, find some working gloves and some okay pants. So those are usually a pretty good place to to loot for some food and, and basic items. I also do like to keep a low profile if, if possible and sneak around. Yeah, yeah, I grabbed that zombie because we got clipped onto a wall, but. It happens. I try and kill a small amount of zombies when possible because I don't want to leave a big trail and let people know that I'm around. It's not always you know, something we can control. Zombies can be weird. But, um, you know. Oh, my chicken's a tank, apparently. <laughs> uh, Alright, so we're gonna gonna take this chicken I don't want to cut it out in the open here I want to wait until you know we get a little bit better of an area to so, somewhere more protected you know I don't want to just cut in the middle of the the field there yeah okay, we'll take that we'll take this uh, little sickle as well a little bit smaller and lighter in my inventory so you can see I'm not really looting every house. I, I have um, a few points of interest that I wanna I wanna hit up. Cause you know, I'm finding enough as I go and I don't wanna spend too much time in, in my spawn town. I tend to find that the longer you spend in the place that you spawn, the higher chances are that you're gonna die. So I like to spend as little time as possible. I try and find some decent clothing, face covering, a hat, gloves, and some supplies to get me going with food, and then I try and get the hell out of there. If you sneak up to a zombie with a bladed item in your hand, you can sneak to kill them. But you see there, I, I go with that one. So I didn't get the animation. They have to be unaggroed, not alerted. I did hear a chicken near- oh, brass knuckles. That is, uh, pretty huge, actually. Brass knuckles are really good for knocking out other players and fighting zombies. And they're, you know, they're a two by one. Yeah, two by one in your, in your inventory. Uh, they don't take up a lot of space, they're light, and they're very, very effective. So, not a bad thing to have in your inventory. We will also carry this, uh... This axe to fight zombies, and we have a couple knives here, so we don't need to carry that sickle anymore. That's not the biggest deal in the world. Uh, you can loot the fire station here for maybe some firefighter clothing and, you know, other firefighter things like this firefighter axe and the jackets and pants. The jacket and pants offer best insulation, uh, but they're very heavy, so I don't like picking them up. I'm wearing them unless it's like super cold if I'm playing on like a winter map or something like Namalsk or Winter Cherno, something along those lines. Um, and you can also find NBC gear in here. A little lucky boonie hat, cool. Uh, but yeah, I don't really need to loot it. I found an axe. That's going to get me going. It's going to get me through. Uh, so I think it's best if we go hit up this this medical area. And you did see me find that coke on a zombie. Zombies are actually a very underutilized uh, source of finding items, like resourceful items. You can find cans of food, you can find cans of soda, 
Uh, you can find, you know, small things like knives and maybe a con like you can find random items. Oh, and we got a we got a player nearby, so we have to be careful here. Yeah, see, he probably there's dead zombies around the medical. It tells me he probably already looted the medical. Um, so I'm gonna try and move around him. Yeah, he might be loot cycling there. <laughs> that dry sack. Oh, we did find an IJ here. With does it have a bullet? It has one bullet. Okay. Um. I don't. If I kill that chicken and it stops, you know, clucking, he might kind of take that as a sign that I'm around. We don't want that. The fact that he's shooting weapons around too is a bit scary. <laughs> Um, we do need to hit the well, and I would like to hit the police station here in town, but... I don't know, I'm just kind of looting around a little bit in hopes that we find some 380 ammo, because we could... We could use it to defend ourselves now with... This guy shooting around us. You know, if we don't find anything... Uh... We might just have to... Get out of here, move on to the upper part of the city. That's the cool thing about bears, you know, is it's kind of like layered, you know? I'm in the... It's kind of like split in half is a better way to put it. I'm in the lower section at the moment. Uh, it has a the fire station, the blue medical like I just showed you. And then it also has a police station with a well, which is actually really useful. And wow. A lot of... See, you will find this kind of often. Um, sometimes players will just be nice and plant some vegetables. Uh, so, you know, we can get some, a nice, easy little snack. Very kind of them. And we'll just tuck those away. And now we'll leave some for some other fresh bones. But that's cool. I don't know if that's that guy and I just stole his food or what, but... We'll take a, a pumpkin for ourselves. We're just kind of stockpiling food. A lot of the times I like to eat on the go. Oh, we found a, another IJ with a mag. All right, let's um. IJs are quite common and I actually like them. They're 380 rounds are not bad at all. They're actually very useful weapons. Especially early game, because they, they can kind of tear through a, a stab vest. Which is what most people would be wearing at this stage if they have a ballistic vest of any sort. Um, take a battery. But yeah, 380 is a really underutilized ammo type. IJs are very common. I always try and pick up a, an IJ if I can to start off. Unless I find something better first, of course. I think I did hear a zombie aggro slightly. I don't think it was on me either, so we need to be super careful. The guy sounded like he shot near the well. And I don't see aggroed zombies. Again, yeah, okay, nice. Can swap those. I like to, I like to, it's always nice to have, um, Things to repair your clothing with down the line because you know you want to keep your insulation value. You don't want things to ruin. So uh, you know a sewing kit and a roll of duct tape is always a nice thing to to have on on your body at all times. You know those are those are things that you know we don't need straight off the bat, but are, it's always nice to have them going forward, right? So, and if you've watched any of my any of my videos. You probably have noticed I don't typically like to, um, you know, wear a backpack. But early game, I tend to. Just so I can grab and go and get out of town really quickly and efficiently. And then, once I get to somewhere a bit safer and I have the things that I need, I will uh, resort then to, you know, sorting out my stuff, getting organized, and I'm moving forward. 
All right, so I'm gonna take a bit of a risk here and loot this police station. I imagine he's probably been through here, but maybe we'll get lucky and find a stab vest or something. I think he's over at the well. That's where the shot kind of sounded like. Someone just left a wooden crate there. Ah, uh, this was a, somebody built in here. It's kind of cool. Oh, nice. I actually really like the burlap courier bag, so I'm going to take that. Holds more. Oh, well, it doesn't actually hold more, but I think it just looks a little bit cooler. <laughs> Daisy is very style, style based. Oh, aviators can be nice. Uh, you can wear sunglasses, and a lot of people don't know. They actually, like, this is kind of a recent change. They will change, like, so you can see this is what my vision looks like. You put the sunglasses on, it does dim things, and it blocks out the sun. So it's really useful in a gunfight if you have the sun in your eyes. All right, this, so this was a, oh, wow. Okay, maybe he didn't come here. So we get an early game shotgun here. I'm not gonna... I'm not going to wear this right now. Uh, we have two knives, so I can afford to drop that road flare. Wow, two shotguns. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of scummy to build a base in here, in my opinion. Because this is like a point of interest in a spawn town. So people probably just can't... They, these people probably just camped and, uh, you know, took advantage of the freshies. Here, let's put these. I don't want to wear it. It's, it's kind of dark and the sun's not out, so... Not really any point in us wearing the sunglasses at the moment. Wow. Three shotguns and... I mean, this is a medium to high pop server at the moment, so like... Wow. Suppressor. Alright, we have a... IJ, so we might as well, yep, put it on the IJ. But yeah, this is an official medium to high pop server right now. We found three guns in the police station. We found two MKs, two IJs. Like, we're finding plenty of loot. There's uh, quite an abundance of it. And this is a very popular spawn. So it just goes to show you that, you know, maybe you're just not looking in the right places if you're having trouble finding loot. And I'm not even being very thorough. So also keep that in mind. Fuck. I didn't want that. Oh, uh, look at that. You can... I've kind of brushed over this. You can find, um... Fruit under the trees. Fruit aren't really a great source of, of food. Um, it can be abundant, but, you know, it's not going to give you tons of calories. So it's almost not worth going out of your way to loot for fruit. Um, another quick tip. When you find water bottles with water already in them, I always dump them because they can be poop water, and most of the time it is, uh, and poop water gets you sick, so always just dump it, you hold it in your hands, you look down at the ground like this, and then you see, you see the prompt in the bottom left to say it's empty, and that will uh, obviously empty your bottle. But we emptied it, we filled it with clean well water, and we're going to drink it up, drink an entire bottle. Because it is much faster than sitting at the well and um, slurping with your hands. See, we're already up to to white three quarters with three arrows going up. We should be pretty close to full, and then we'll just, you know, fill this bottle up before we head off. Um, yeah, and you can see we are starving. We haven't eaten quite enough yet to, to be full. We're gonna go grab that other chicken. I think this guy's left the area. So we should be okay. I'm gonna eat a little bit too. Cause I'm kind of in a bit of a secure position. You know, the well's a high priority, high traffic area, but it seems like nobody's around. And if somebody does come around, I'll hear them fighting zombies, most likely. Not a lot of players take the, the time and effort to be as cautious as I am, so. You know, it just requires a little patience to be able to sneak around. And this rain's really helping me out as well. Uh, these pubs are actually usually pretty good for finding, uh, you know, like, there you go, there's some food. I usually find pretty decent clothing in here. You can find, like, rider's jackets, which is one of my, that's one of my favorite jackets in the game. 
All right, so we're just gonna sneak our way over. I've kind of searched all the points of interest here that I want to look at. So we just wanna we just wanna find this um this chicken. Oh man, we gotta bleed. Make sure so when you spawn in, the bandage that you spawn in with will be disinfected typically so you want to make sure that whatever you're using is disinfected um like you saw these rags i cut up earlier doesn't say disinfected anywhere so if you use those you can get a, a wound infection and that can kill you uh, if you end up having to use that like you get desperate or something um just make sure you disinfect after using if you can find iodine or disinfectant spray or alcohol tincture uh, if you can't and you end up progressing to stage two you have to take tetracycline or you will slowly die <laughs> it sounds pretty morbid but um that's just a part of the game that's one of the the illnesses involved all right we've kind of looted all my points of interest we looted we quickly looted the fire station. We really only wanted an axe from there. Uh, we looted. We didn't loot the medical because it, I kind of assumed that it would be looted because of the gunshot and the dead zombie around. But I could be wrong, actually. We might go take a look. But then we also went to the well, filled up, and then we got some stuff from the uh, police station. We came out of there with a pistol silencer and a pump-action shotgun, which is really nice. You know, we were already pretty, pretty well set up for... A nice little start to an adventure here yeah and this looks pretty pretty looted I'm not seeing anything but the chickens outside so we can go grab the chicken before we go um I will take this radio though radios can be pretty interesting to use in terms of uh, you know sometimes players will just hop on them and, and talk to each other and I've actually tracked other players down by using that and killed them and, you know, took their stuff. So it can be an interesting little side quest for you and a way to get some to have a something like, yeah, you know, like a unique little adventure. And something weird happened there. I didn't get any bones from that. I think they may have glitched into the wall, but it is what it is. We'll see if we can get some from this uh, this chicken here. Uh, you also may have seen that I didn't pick up the charcoal tabs. That's because I usually don't put myself in a situation where I need to use charcoal tabs. Um, oh, there's some Tetra there. We'll take that. But yeah, so I don't pick them up. Uh, it might be a good idea for you. Well, you know what? Honestly, if you're following this guide and one of my previous guides... There we go. We got some bones this time. Uh, that kind of goes over sicknesses and what you should and shouldn't do to avoid sickness i think you'd be you'd be okay the, the medicines that you really want to aim to get are tetracycline because they kind of cover all the bases most of the most common illnesses you can see if you combine two uh two stacks you can make up a, a stack of up to 12 but uh yeah i like to pick up tetra i'll pick up codeine i think i picked some up yeah uh, I looked maybe for some extra bandages and then an EpiPen or a morphine. But if I have a bunch of codeine, I may not be as inclined to pick up morphine. Uh, so what each of those do, um, an EpiPen will, if you inject that, you get 60 seconds of full unlimited stamina. Well, not full, whatever you have, but you have unlimited stamina for 60 seconds. So it's really useful if you, like are in a gunfight and you want to get out of there because you're outnumbered or outgunned or something super useful to use to get out of a position or to maybe to flank or so on um, then codeine is just like a you know it's a nice little painkiller that if you're if you're hurting like if you're yellow health and you want to be able to get out of a situation you pop one of those suckers and you can you actually can run like your white health uh, and from red, it would make if you use one, it'll make it run like make you run like your yellow health and and so on and so forth. But a morphine, no matter what your 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 health status is, um, a morphine will make you 
be able to run for 60 seconds uh, like your full white health. So they all have their their uses. I just like to, you know, I like to stay light. So I pick I pick up a few extra bandages, maybe one or two full bandages if possible. An EpiPen because I and I find myself using an EpiPen most commonly, and then some codeine or maybe a morphine. Basic, and then some Tetra as well, just in case, or vitamins if possible. Vitamins are kind of like a a boost to your immune system like they would be in real life. And uh, they can actually cure some illnesses as well. But yeah, so, I mean, first, I I'm not sure exactly how much time this has been, but the first, like, 20 minutes or so, we've already got ourselves a primary weapon. No ammo yet, but, you know, we have one. We have a pistol with ammo and a mag and even a silencer, a firefighter axe, which is a useful melee weapon and tool for, you know, cutting down wood or fighting zombies or players or, you know, just a very useful handy tool. We got a couple knives, bones to make bone hooks from chickens. We got some chicken meat. Uh, we got found some veggies and fruit and even a couple canned foods and a water bottle. You know, we're, we're doing pretty well for ourselves. We just need to maybe upgrade our clothing, find some ammo, and we'll be well on our way to being able to start off uh, a nice little adventure. So as you can see, I wasn't very thorough, and I still ended up finding quite a bit of stuff, and this is an official US server. Um, so, you know, if you just know where to look, you go to the points of interest, you stay low, you uh, avoid zombies as much as possible, you'll be okay. And even if you can't avoid the zombies, like you saw there, um, I use this blocking technique to avoid taking any, any, un any unnecessary hits. Uh, typically a zombie, I can show you an example. Uh, and talk you through it as I'm fighting. But typically a zombie will... Oh, here we go, look. So a zombie usually... Yoo so look, they they see me, they notice me, they are gonna aggro here. So they aggro, they run at you. One hit, two hit, they stop. That's when you strike. Two power hits with my... Um, with my brass knuckles does the job. So again, look, I'll show you. They notice me. They'll aggro and scream, they'll run at me, I block and back up, one hit, two hit, attack. And if you just space out those, um, space out those power hits, you can get quite a few in before they're able to, uh, react to the situation again. So, just keep that in mind when you're fighting zombies, and if you're having trouble, that will more than like you, likely help you out quite a bit. We'll get another chicken here. It's just nice to, you know, grab chickens if you have the space and you can use the food. Uh, it's raining, so, and I don't have good clothing for the rain. So it's going to be nice to be able to fill up in, on food as much as possible. Because when you're cold, um, your temperature tends to go down a bit faster. So that's also something you can maybe keep in mind when you're running around. You know, I'm, I'm running around sprinting with... Not the greatest clothing in the world. In the rain, and it was nighttime. Now it's like starting to, to get to, to morning. So all those things have factors. Temperature, your activity level, um, your, your, your body temperature. All those things will impact your, your food stats and, and so on. So if you're more cold, we got another pistol suppressor, but we don't need it would be cool to have but you gotta learn when to uh, pick things up and when not to like right now we really need to prioritize food and other like handy supplies and you know an extra suppressor is just not a luxury we can have right now because we don't have the space also I could pick up those shotgun shells but those are rubber slugs and honestly they're really not worth worth the time or the or the space in my opinion you might think like, oh, well, it's it's better than no slugs, but honestly, in my opinion, 
It's really not. <laughs> they don't have great range, uh, from my experience anyway. And uh, they won't kill a player, they'll only knock them out. So if you... Maybe they're handy in a one-on-one -on -one situation, but... You know, if you run into anything more than that, then... You're kind of screwed. Nice. And this is kind of a... You know, this is a nice step up here. Going from... A medium insulation hoodie to a nice best insulation peacoat. Uh, they have the same absorbency rate, I'm pretty sure, or something very similar. So I will absorb the rain water and uh, get cold. That's not very water resistant, as you can imagine. But when it's not raining, peacoats are really good to keep around. Some fruit. Just eat as I go. We're gonna have to get to a point here where we um. Well, we cook up some of this food so I can free up some inventory space. Um, and like I was saying, you know, priori prioritizing your inventory and only picking up the essentials is really, really important early game. Especially as you, if you're taking the same approach in the loot and scoot method, you know? Like trying to loot everything that you can and getting out of the spawn town as fast as possible. Uh, if you're taking that approach to it, eating on the go and eating to save space is really, really essential. Uh, you don't want to hoard food. I just want to go with the nice all black look. A little bit less noticeable. Um, but yeah, oh, double barrel. I'd rather, much rather have a double barrel than a pump. But like I said, uh, you want to, you want to be able to carry it as much as you can. Not as much of the essential items early game as possible. But it doesn't mean go go right ahead and, you know, pick up every item that you see. That's not a that's not a good thing to do. It's not a good uh, habit to get into. But right now I'm just picking up a little bit of ammo that I'm finding, all the food and um some of the supplies like knives, a sewing kit, rags, bandages, duct tape, medicine. You know, just some basic items that are going to get me going and help me survive in the later game. I'm just making my way this way slowly. Because, yes, there it is. There's a hunting shop here. There is also a well across that pond over there. But there is another one on my way out of Barazino, so I don't really need to, um... don't really need to hit that one because we've already... Hit one well, and we don't want to spend our time going to every little tiny area that could be of, of importance, you know? We want to just keep moving, and this looks pretty looted, but ooh, nice. That's pretty big. Another nearly full mag, actually. So I'm just going to take a second here. I'm going to get into a house. I'm going to get into this, this log cabin. And just, um... Load up my weapon a bit, because now we have about a mag and a half worth of, uh, worth of ammo. So we'll just go one, two. We'll fill this up. So we got one full mag and then another mag with four in it. Which is awesome. So we'll go here, boom, boom. Uh, we don't need three mags. Let's be realistic here. We don't really need that many, uh... Mags of ammo. And while we're sitting in here, we might as well, um, eat up some of our food as well. Open up some space in our inventory. And it sounds like the rain's stopping, and it's getting closer to noon time, which is awesome. Another thing that you can do if you, uh, like to organize your loot when you get the, when you get, um, the chance. If you know you're gonna keep, um... If you're going to keep a piece of clothing over another one, so like, I'm much more inclined to keep this black pea coat than I am to keep my, my black capri pants. I will put my, more of my essential items in this pea coat so I don't have to um, do a lot of transferring. Like, I don't really, like I want that. And I also would want, no, I already have another knife. Maybe I'll keep that there. We'll swap out the three, five, like... But a spare knife and two rags. Like, if I need to swap clothes in a hurry or something, like, I can just not have to worry about 
taking all my best things out of a piece of clothing that I know I'm not going to keep in the first place. So the point is, keep all... Try and fill up your the clothing you think you're going to keep uh, over others. And it just saves time when you have to transfer loot between. Nice. Some more 380. So we're hitting all the check boxes here, right? We're finding plenty of food. We have a bunch of chicken to, to cook with. Um, you know, we're white in every category except for temperature, but it is turning day, so we should be soon. And look at that. That's almost, it feels scripted almost. We just found ourselves a rope, so we have all the material we need to go fishing. And we can completely fill up on our food. We have we have some pretty pretty decent clothing honestly we have a primary weapon and a shotgun got a cute little backpack you know we got something to start a fire with disinfect rags with fix clothes nice melee some medicine a pistol with uh, quite a bit of ammo at this point we're doing pretty well and I'm not even looting a fraction of these houses I'm just trying to loot the ones on the way to essential areas and just keep moving. But hell yeah, this is, um... Again, this is an official server. And, uh, we're doing, doing pretty well for ourselves here. You know, you, you could tell it wasn't it wasn't an empty server because there was somebody shooting around us early. Uh, when I hopped in, it was medium to high. Like I was looking at servers to join, and it was high, and then I refreshed, and it was medium. But you know, it's an active server. People are around, and eh, potatoes aren't even really worth the effort. But you know, I'll pick it up anyway. Food's food. You do have to peel a potato. Which is kind of dumb. It doesn't really give you that much caloric value. But I'll pick it up for now. Because we're going to be cooking anyway. But, you know, if I found a bunch of cans or something, I would I probably wouldn't be picking up potatoes. <laughs> it's just not worth my time. Another bad thing about spawning in in the morning and, uh, and nighttime and stuff. And in the rain especially. Is when you're in this blue temperature state, light blue. You, will, um, you won't lose health or anything. But you can lose, uh, or you can get a cold from that, and you'll need medicine. So that's why it's kind of important to find warmer clothes as fast as possible so that you uh, avoid early game sicknesses. Because I know a lot of people, especially new players, struggle with, um, oh, nice, struggle with getting sick early game. Um, I already got a pea coat. That's worn, so that's a player drop pea coat. They don't spawn like that, I don't think. It's very rare. They either spawn pristine or in some kind of damaged state. In my experience, that's usually a, a player dropped item there. All right. So there is. So there's the hospital. There's a little military tent outside the hospital, and a nice patrol patrol shack here that will that will check out. And we'll loot these areas. And then there's also you can see it right there. That's another police station. We'll go check that out too. Hopefully get maybe some ammo. Uh, I'm locked mag, don't need it. We're gonna rock the IJ. Um, we'll pick up some handcuffs, just because why not? You never know. I like, if I run into a player and I, I get the, the jump on them, and I can knock them out, or, you know, whatever. I like to try and hold them up, rather than just killing on sight. Especially in the spawn towns, you know. Because everyone's just trying to start out, and it can be frustrating if you just get killed all the time. Ooh, a deagle mag, that's pretty rare, so we'll, we'll actually take that. Okay, these these little like shop fronts too. Um, they actually spawn some pretty decent stuff. So, you know, if they're on your way, you can find food and stuff in there. And if you're quick enough, you can, um, you know, do that blocking thing without pulling out your melee first. 
So if a zombie surprised you, like, I thought that one was stuck on the statue. And it surprised me. You just still go into the blocking animation, and then as soon as they're done that second swipe, you can quickly whip out, um, your melee. I like to keep mine on the one. My primary melee on the one tab. So that way I can, you know, just quickly hit that button, and we'll be good. Oof. Alright, we don't really need the axe as much. Um, we do have a couple knives, and we have these brass knuckles, so the knives will primarily be uh, utility tools rather than melee weapons. Oh, a box of 380, that's huge. Uh, so yeah, we're going to ditch the axe for that BK-18. So now, wow, this is also a base. Or someone was looking to make it into a base. Man, I just don't understand the whole building in primary loot loot spots like this. It's pretty 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 lame if you ask me. But um yeah. I'd rather have a long range weapon than than that axe. We can you know we can go without having the axe. We've been using the brass knuckles to fight zombies and we have the knives to cut bark or cut wood or whatever we need to do. So just prioritize, try and stay as light as possible, pick up the essentials. Because now at this point, we're like 30, 40 minutes in, doing pretty good on food, temperature. Like look at all this chicken we've stockpiled, we have the things to go fishing, found some jam, and we have a shotgun, and we have a long range BK-18. Uh, we still need to find ammo, that's, you know, our next, part of our next step. But, uh, you know, so far so good, right? It sure beats uh, what I've been hearing in the fact that, oh, I've looted for for five hours and found zero items. Like, this is me trying to prove that, that theory and that point wrong. It's just you're maybe not looking in the right places or the server you're playing on is super active in the spawn areas. Oh, wow. SG5, that's kind of cool, but I'm good. I got a shotgun. You don't want to pick up everything you find. It's just not a healthy habit to get into. In, in my opinion, all you need is a long range, a close quarter combat weapon, and uh, like a backup res last resort weapon like a pistol. So I have all three of those and I'm very, I'm content with the three that I have. Uh, a shotgun is much, much stronger than an SG5 would be and I don't have ammo for either, so just stick with the shotgun. Be different if I had like you know, a couple mags and some 9 mil for the SG-5, but I don't, so we'll hold off on that. It's not a big deal. Nice EpiPen. Let's go. Okay. Loot the hospital. It's also... Hey, there you go. Um, it's also kind of important... To loot clothes that spawn in areas like this because they can oftentimes already have items in them and they will spawn that way so you know same goes for military and police and firefighter areas uh, it's also important which I'll show you in a second just kind of get rid of these zombies so in this court, so we're at a hospital area, right? In the corresponding uh, circumference, radius, whatever you want to say. Um, like, see, look, cars will spawn, medical gear. We already have it in EpiPen. I don't want to stack too many. There's a gas filter. If I wanted to do NBC stuff, that would be cool. Like, these cars, these sheds and surrounding buildings will usually, and the zombies too, they will spawn medical supplies. So, you know... <sighs> Just make sure you're not looting only the, um, not only the main building because the surrounding areas and cars and zombies will also spawn stuff from that tier of stuff that you're looking for. And look at that. We get ourselves a nice stack of ammo here. I'm going to drop those rags because we don't need to make a rag rope anymore. We have an actual rope. And now we have... A long range weapon and a pistol to shoot with. Already. 
in under an hour. It's crazy what experience looting can help you find. And that's not to to bash on the new players, but there's so many players that give up so easily because they don't find things in just a couple buildings. And uh, this is just, you know, kind of proof that if you look in the right places and, you know, you don't get impatient after finding nothing in one house, that you can you can find quite a bit good stuff in even just a spawn town. But it's also important to keep in mind, you're not going to find top tier items here, right? This is supposed to be more of a hardcore style survival game, so don't expect to find tons of guns and ammo. I'm honestly shocked at the amount of stuff we found. I, I figured we'd get, you know, a good start going, but I found all the things I need already to, to go to higher tier areas. Aside from maybe some shotgun ammo, that's about it. Look, we got a nice outfit. We got one of my favorite backpacks, my favorite pair of shoes, tons of food. We can go find a house or somewhere to cook. And we have two, um, you know, fireable weapons. We have a, a BK-18 with a handful of shots, and we got an IJ with a ton of rounds at this point. And we'll, have, we'll be able to fill up two mags. That's, that's pretty huge, man. Plus, we got some nice, some nice goodies as well. And that's all by, you know, looting a few houses in between key areas of interest and getting a couple chickens along the way. Can of unknown. And uh, that's, you know, it's not really worth me picking up with all the, the actual good food I have. Those can be good, and if you're in a desperate situation, you can eat it. Um, but if you eat too much of it at one time, it will get you sick. So when you do eat it, I recommend you take it in, in nibbles. So you eat it. Uh, here, I'll demonstrate with the jam here. When you eat, you can hear one, two, three. Every time your player makes that crunching sound when they're eating, uh, that counts as one. Oh, look at that. Some rice, too. Huge, dude. That's huge. I can drop some other things that I may not need for it. Yeah, so like we don't necessarily need the handcuffs. So more of a a luxury item. And now we're at a point where we have a lot of stuff and we can start. But uh, like I said, you want to do those three nibbles if you eat it, a can of unknown. You can also use that strategy if you um, eat something with bloody hands or something that's raw and gets you sick. If you're throwing up and have food poisoning and you don't have charcoal tablets, you can... Uh, eat and drink using that method, the three nibble method, and you should be able to get back up to uh, to full food and water eventually if you're persistent enough with that, and you'll be good. You can uh, actually overcome that sickness without taking medicine if you can eat and drink enough to fight it off and boost your immune system. So right before we leave town, I, tr uh, I want to hit up this well. I'll top off my water bottle. We'll probably be full food, uh, water at that point. Plus, we will get some hydration from eating all this chicken. Uh, and once you get a little bit better with melee, you can do what I just did there. And rather than going straight into the blocking uh, stance, you can just deliver the first blow if you time it right. Um, you just have to get an understanding for the zombie. I'm, I'm, I've gotten pretty good at it, but zombies can sometimes move in, in, in unpredictable ways. So it's not 100% effective. I think uh, the block method is closer to 100% effective and not taking a hit. Because sometimes a zombie will like move in a way that they sort of dodge my, my initial swing. And then I'll end up eating a hit because they clothesline me or something. But, uh, you know, if you're in a situation where you don't want to stand there for too long because, you know, there's gunshots around you, you're trying to trail somebody, something like that, delivering that first strike can get you out of there faster. 
And yeah, so we're, I mean, I'm content enough with the gear that I have to move on from Berezino already. Uh, there's, I know that there's a house on the way to Gorka up here. Um, that I can cook in. It's kind of secluded away from the spawn town. And could be a nice place to cook. So we'll head up there, we'll cook our food, and we'll talk about the next steps going forward. And you can hear another chicken, but we have enough stuff to fish and we have plenty of chicken already. So I'm gonna go ahead and avoid that chicken. We don't need it. You can also loot hunting sands like this. Oh, look at that. That's really lucky actually. That's a good that's a good find. You get a hunting backpack. You can find hunting gear in these little deer shacks. Um, I don't usually like carrying a big backpack. I usually will actually typically stick with this burlap bag to challenge myself a little bit. But because this is more of a beginner's guide, um, you know, I'll pick it up and and play a bit more like a like a new player would. So hunter bag's nice. Uh, my bag preference is as long as I can look behind me and my bag isn't completely obstructing my view, I think it's a good backpack. Um, but I like to do stay light. I like to do the burlap bags because it limits my inventory space and it's really not very noticeable and bulky. And you can easily make it or find it on a zombie even. So I like those because they're they're handy, they're tactical, they're stealthy, uh, and they still carry a fair amount of stuff. But these hunter backpacks are probably the best backpack in the game. Uh, you get 63 slots. Uh, you can put almost anything in it, and you get a you know you get the the standard radio and chem light slot as well. So I mean our gear is looking pretty good already, and we haven't even we just left the spawn town on our way to our first actual legitimate town. Pretty cool. Shankas are like one of my favorites. All right, let's get cooking then. Ooh, hunter pants. Oh, somebody definitely was here. Ooh, a hunting scope. Yeah, I don't think this building usually spawns hunting stuff. Maybe it does, because I know hunting zombies, like I just killed one, they can spawn here, but I didn't think the hunting gear actually spawned in this location. I'm not sure. But anyway, I mean, to start a fire, it's pretty self-explanatory. You can hold firewood or sticks in your hands. You can go up to a stove like this and just place it inside, or you can drag it in. Either one works. That's only my fuel. I'll also need something to um, to uh, start it up with, you know, act as some kindling. What I like to do, if I have boxes of ammo, which, you know, maybe not be so common early on, I like to save them until I make a fire, and then I use that paper from the box to serve as my kindling. Ooh. See, we got all this stuff, but my matches are damp. So what that means is I can't use them because they won't light as, you know, as it would be in real life. So in this case, I could have used the flare that I had earlier, or I can use a knife, and I can cut off some bark. Let me take that. Let's run inside. And we can take one of these, we can take the sticks off. If you right click, it'll split it. Uh, because it was an uneven number, it split it into a two and a one. And then all you need is one stick, one piece of bark, uh, the first option will be to craft a fireplace if you just click next recipe and then you hold left click it'll make a hand drill kit and we can use that to start a fire so if you're if you have matches and they're damp or you just don't have a fire starter but you do have a knife or something to cut bark off with that is your uh your best option it only has one use but you know 
pretty handy. And now we'll just load up our chicken. I like to put uh, my chicken or whatever meat that I'm cooking, put one, however many I can put in the cooking slot to bake it because baking is the best, um, the best way to cook in terms of caloric value. And then I leave these on the smoker to heat up, and then when these are done, I can just rotate. I can pull this one down, move that one over, put a new one on, and just rotate until all of my chicken is baked and I'm good to go. And uh, by the time we cook all this chicken and eat all the food we have, we should be full food, water, health, and blood, which is pretty awesome. We are in a pretty good position here. Um, but yeah, so as we're, uh, as we're waiting for our, our food to cook, which... There you go. You can see it's not pink anymore. It is now a golden brown color. We'll rotate and replace in my inventory. So at this point now, while my food's cooking, um, I'll just talk about what my next steps will kind of look like. Um, right now, as I'm cooking, I like to maybe mess around with my inventory a little bit. I like to put all my medical items and like utility items in the same place, usually my backpack. Right, backpack has the most storage. I keep all my most important stuff in there. Because a lot of times if I have a backpack, it's the one that I want and uh, I won't swap it out. So I'll keep my most important stuff in here. So we got our medical, our little medical section here. We'll do that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll spend time organizing my inventory, making it look neat because that's just the psycho that I am. Oh, I forgot to rotate there. Bad job on my part. Uh, I'll eat any food that I have to just, you know, save space unless I'm like about to throw up. We don't want to overdo it. So I'll organize and then I like to plan my next step. So at this point, I found a ton of food, so I don't really need any food. Uh, quite yet because like I said by the time we eat everything we should actually be um, completely full on food and water and plus if, but but if in, in the case that I did need to you know actually go and, and get some more food I have rope and I have bones that's all you need to make an improvised fishing rod and and uh, some bone hooks to go fishing as long as you have a knife to, to combine with the bones to to actually make the bone hooks and then you also have um, a, you know still enough uses in that knife to collect bait in terms of worms then you're good it's really all you need uh, it's really simple to go fishing you just combine a rope with a long stick you make some bone hooks uh, in the way that I just described to you and you can just go fishing. It's really as simple as that. And fish are really, really good uh, food sources, especially early on. But we will be full food and water by the time we eat all this, so we don't need to do that. But we'll keep the supplies on us anyway for a later date in case we don't find food inland or something. Which I don't typically see as a pr uh, being a problem, but you never know. If you play on servers like I typically do, which are more hardcore than fishing is really, really a necessity, honestly. But uh, we've kind of cleaned out our inventory, which is just such a satisfying feeling for me. Like, I don't even really need this MK. Uh, it can be something nice, but we'll just ditch it. I don't, I don't need it. I've got a silenced pistol. I've got a ranged weapon. You know, doesn't really... I don't see any need for... Uh, For keeping it, we will just keep organizing. So, next step would typically to be, you know, go shore up our food situation. But since we don't need to do that, I'll just eat everything I have, and I would move to the next town and uh, look to find some upgrade we upgraded weapons or some ammo for the shotgun, something along those lines. That would be super, super ideal. But maybe we'll cover cover next steps in the next episode, yeah? I've uh, I've shown you the, the places that I like to loot. 
you know, how I handle zombies early on, how I like to stealth around. I've shown you how to cook and make a fire. I've shown you the supplies you need to, to you know, get some early game food. And I've talked about all the things that I like to prioritize as a fresh bone. And I'll have to look at the exact amount of time it's taken me, but I imagine it's been just about an hour. And I've already got myself, you know, I've got myself a really good jacket, some gloves, really good boots, probably the best backpack in the game, a nice warm hat. I've got a shotgun, no ammo, but I've got a BK-18, which is a nice single shot long range weapon with, you know, a handful of rounds. And a pistol with two mags, two full mags, and over a stack of ammo, which is awesome. And we're full water. We're going to be full food soon. Full blood, full health. And some pretty pretty decent, you know, utility supplies as well. Um, again, this is on an official U.S. server. And this is how I like to survive as a fresh spawn. But uh, I'll maybe pick this up. And show you an intermediate level what I do with in my next steps here but you know that's it for this one and I'll see you guys in the next one all right bye bye